Welcome to another video and today is the 7th of December and I apologize for being on a pretty long hiatus but now I'm back and I will be uploading regularly. We have a lot of stuff to get into but I'm going to keep it pretty short just for the sake of brevity. And so we're going to start off from the south and work our way up north starting off with the fact that Ukraine hit a substation in Volnovaka. And so this comes after the strikes that were launched from Russia on 11 cities, if I recall correctly, on various substations and different centers of electricity supply and such. And so now we're seeing Ukraine, they're using their artillery to fire onto the Russian substations. So I don't think this one was actually in operation. I'm pretty sure that it was in the process of being repaired and connected to the local grids and then it was shelled and the interesting thing is that the control house was specifically hit and so this really makes it very difficult to resume operations over here and so again this could further complicate the situation in terms of electricity electricity supply in this local region also i'd point out that um, valovaka is in a very important position for russia and they really don't want it within the range of ukrainian artillery because Volnovaka, if you look at the surrounding regions, it is a rail hub. You have a lot of different train uh, different train lines coming in from here, different roads that intersect at this point. So it is very important logistically going to the Donetsk front and to the Vukhodar front. And that's also part of the reason why Russia even launched the Vukhodar offensive in the first place. They wanted to get control of this four position for launching artillery onto Volnovaka. If they really are serious about this, though, they would really need to also dislodge the forward artillery positions at Novomikhailivka and some of these other towns around here, which will be very difficult, as we've seen. But let's move on now to some of the more active fronts. So we have Avdivka. Again, we haven't really heard much from Avdivka, but in recent days, we've seen a lot of back and forth shelling over here, artillery duels from the Russian and Ukrainian side, specifically the Ukrainians, they fired a lot of artillery onto the um, center of Donetsk, and we've seen this. A lot of this come from Avdivka. We've seen some of it come from some of these other towns like Nevelske over here, and I'm sure that some of it was also coming from Orlivka. And so, uh, in response, the Russians are now utilizing thermite munitions. There are videos linked over here if you're interested to see of these forward Ukrainian positions which were located around here you can see they're pretty close to this forested area so Ukraine does have some artillery positions set up over here so their um, four positions were fired upon by the Russians and just like they used in Marinka thermal munitions they're also using them now in Avdivka now let's move on to the most important front at the moment which is the Bakhmut front where I did make some changes to the map you can see so now I've expanded the Russian zone of control to most of the area to the east of the canal and also to some areas that are to the west of the canal, interestingly. So it seems as if the Wagner Group, they were able to cross over the um, canal in this area over here where you have some like open land. And then from there, they advanced along this ridge over here in the direction of Bilahora. So this is very interesting because really most of us were expecting a thrust towards Ivanivske in the north. But then we had this report from the Ukrainian general staff of an attack on the positions in Bilahora. And so the Ukrainians, they say they repelled this assault. And I do believe them because the Russians haven't taken Bilahora yet. But either way, we now know that they do have, I guess you could call it a bridgehead, but it's not that, um, that notable. But they now do have positions to the west of the canal, which could be used to later on advance onto Bilahora. Maybe they're attempting to do that even now. I think that if they want to advance on Bilahora, they should go from the north and take over the remaining Ukrainian positions over here. And then using this high ground, they can assault Bilahora from this ridge over here and attack it from the north in a two-pronged assault. And this would also complicate the Ukrainian positions in the Alivka. And they would have to withdraw towards this line over here, which would give Russia a lot of new land, which is closer to um, a, several important cities like Toretsk and importantly towards Konstantinivka and some of these other towns on the rear of the Battle of Bakhmut. 
sort of shaping the front line for future operations. So we'll see what has, uh, what ha whatever goes on over here. I do believe that the 62nd Mechanized Brigade is centered now in Bilahora. The reason why I think this is because I've seen some Ukrainian channels talk about them fighting in the Ozarianivka direction. And so that probably means that they were involved in defending Bilahora because of the proximity of Ozarianivka to Bilahora. But who knows? Anyway, we also have assaults on Klishivka reported, but the Ukrainians are holding strong in Klishivka. I've updated the map every few days or so, and you can see how the front line is now very close to Klishivka. You can see how they have new positions, the Russians, just to the west of these ponds over here. The Ukraine still has some fortified positions that are around this rail line over here, so those need to be taken over. Also, the Russians need to be able to enter Klishivka and mop up the residential areas over here, which seems to be taking a while, but again, we'll have to see how long Ukraine is able to last here given the fact that, look, there's it's very difficult for Klishivka and the garrison here to get supplied. They have to get supplied either like this, you can see through this road over here that's shown on Google Maps, maybe they could get some supplies from Bakhmut itself, although this is probably the most risky option, or from Ivanivske, which is also risky because you're going through these open fields that are exposed. But anyway, it is still holding strong. Now let's go to Opitni, where we've had a lot of news about Russia supposedly taking the town over. I don't actually think they took over the entire town based on the information we have. We do have uh, some video footage, but it was really not enough to give us a good understanding of uh, the exact positions. But it does imply that there is heavy fighting within the town. So there was this video from the Ukraine 53rd Brigade. Um, this is the 53rd Brigade. These, these are the uh, second mechanized battalion of the 53rd Brigade, which is the main battalion fighting in this area. So some soldier from there, he posted a video. You can hear some very heavy fire in the background. And so it is pretty clear that the fighting has reached this town. According to Russian sources, the Russians have control of this fruit factory in the south. I think the fruit factory is over here, and then you have some um, post office and a few residential buildings in the south. They also have control of the soccer field, apparently, but the school over here in the destroyed hospital, because I checked and the hospital was always destroyed, um, and the gas station these positions are still held by the Ukrainians, so it is uh, about 50-50, I'd say, right now. The Ukrainians, they attempted a counterattack today with their infantry fighting vehicles, and according to Russian sources, they were unsuccessful. According to Ukrainian sources, they are trying to develop a counterattack in this area and that it is incipient, so we'll have to see what occurs over here. But these counterattacks by the Ukrainians, undoubtedly they've been slowing down the rate of the Wagner Group advance because they have to go on a defensive posture just to make sure that their lines aren't overrun. So now let's move on to some uh, interesting news from Yakovlivka, which is really the main point of the video. We have now news that the 10th Guards Motor Rifle Division has full control of Yakovlivka. I want to give some context about this town because Really, we've been talking about it for months on this channel. So we know how the Battle of Popasnia went, where the Russians were able to basically reach this uh, area, Novokamyanka, Stryapivka. From there, they had to really get through these open fields, these different ridges over here, advance along here, uh, overrun some Ukrainian fortified positions along these bush lines. And this took really a long time. And by the time that the Russians actually like reached the main road from um, Bakhmut to Severodonetsk, it was, if I recall, August, late August. And you can see this is the road that I'm talking about. The Russians did actually reach this road, but they were unsuccessful in breaking through past this road and into the town head on. And they were pushed back to their uh, positions just on the outskirts of the town around this area. And really the reason why they wanted to take Yakovlivka is so they'd have this springboard to attack Solidar, because this is really when the Battle of the Solidar was just starting. Also, they were trying to attack uh, Bilohorivka and Nahirni to also flank from that direction. 
And of course, also from Spirini, they wanted to advance onto Vesele and overrun the Seversk line. None of that worked out in the end, but now it's December and the Russians have finally taken over Yakovlivka. And interestingly, the unit that was involved in defending Yakovlivka was also a 10th uh, brigade, the 10th Mountain Assault Brigade. And so this unit has been very effective in keeping the Russians at bay, especially the Wagner Group and, of course, the 10th Motor Rifle Guards Division. But they eventually were unsuccessful and had to withdraw. So now you see how this puts Solidar and Vesele in some very uncomfortable positions. Let me open up the topographic map and show the situation in Yakovlivka for everyone. So you can see we have um, Solidar. And this is Yakovlivka. Yakovlivka is the town over here on the T1302 highway. You can see that it is on relatively high ground in comparison to the areas just to the south of it, which is a part of why it was so difficult for the Russians to advance towards this town. But now that they have, they have these um, pretty good positions where they can see the situation in Solodar and shell it and launch sniper attacks, mortar attacks, all of that stuff. They also have a pretty good view of Vesele from here. They're on the high ground compared to where Vesele is, and so the situation for the garrison of Vesele will be very difficult, given the fact that now both Yakovlivka and Milohorivka are under Russian control, and so you could see attacks from several sides. And the unit that is in, um, in control of um, Vesele, let me open that one up for the Ukraine side. It is the 118th Cherkasy Defense Brigade. So their job will now be to hold the line over here. You can see Vesele is a pretty small town and that it is connected to the Seversk line over here with Vimka. But then the Ukrainians, they have a backup line, which is around Serebrianka, Seversk, Zvanivka. And so that one could be um, used if the Ukrainians are pushed back. But anyway... That's all I have for today, so thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.